Good afternoon. <laughs> Today, I'm channeling one of my Buddhas that's always by my side. And the incarnation that I recognize him in is the 12th century Franciscan friar, a Catholic monk, who, among other things, is sometimes called the father of modern science because he started working with the empirical method. He was a, quite an influential man of his time. And as I said, this is how I experience him. I experience him as a almost seven foot tall, wearing the brown of his order. I didn't have brown, so the best I could do with today is black. But again, I'm channeling him. <laughs> uh, needing up my beard. Yeah, I'm channeling him today. I don't know. Because today I was going to talk about the past. And talk about the past in the present. Because indeed, like everything else, that's all there is. <laughs> any past, any connection we have with the past is here, right now. So, what I wanted to talk about, but in particular about the past, is what I call puppets of the past. The puppetry of the past. The invisible strings that is the connection, that is our connection to the past. And what dawned on me is that many around me go forward by looking backwards. We call it experience. And yes, undeniably, past experiences shape and form who we are at this moment. Roger said I could take this off. Ah, that's better. There's the shiny Chrome Dome. Thanks, Roger. <laughs> Be yourself, he whispered in my ear. <laughs> but puppetry, puppets of the past. And it seems to me that many, as I watch them, are like a puppet, just dancing, just being manipulated by the strings, by the connections to the past. And we talked about experiential. Yes, indeed, we are, or we seem to be, a product of our past experiences. And if you notice, <laughs> I always qualify because what we sometimes, most of what we accept to be so, should be questioned never taken for granted. Taking something for granted perhaps might be the most dangerous or at least counterproductive thing that we do on a daily basis. We shouldn't take ourselves for granted. We definitely shouldn't take those around us for granted. If the past doesn't teach us anything, we should at least notice that the temporariness, all things pass. So taking for granted 
is not only counterproductive, but counterintuitive. My intuition tells me to celebrate those around me, to celebrate life. But these strings this tendency to see the future through the lens of the past is not a practice we want to cultivate. So I'm suggesting that we shouldn't be a simple puppet. We shouldn't let others pull our strings. And that's so past, present, or future. We shouldn't live today necessarily how we remember living yesterday, all of our yesterdays, as we prepare and approach again here with reverence the future. We should Keep the best, discard the rest, and just breathe. <laughs> just be. And remember, not only do we not want to be a puppet of the past. Not only do we want to let yesterday's experiences be reflected in our preparation for the events of tomorrow. Unless we've been cultivating mindful habits. I talked a couple days ago of making a hobby out of habits. It's the ritual. It's the doing on a daily basis what seemed to work yesterday. And, of course, you have to surrender it, this to the scrutiny of your mind, remembering full well that your mind should be, can be, a tool to evaluate what didn't work yesterday. and pay attention to the leftovers. What is left after your mind has analyzed, scrutinized, categorized, and surrendered to the violet consuming flame? The garbage of yesterday should be attended to this morning. So there's no residual, there's no buildup of residue 
that will impact your life. Because by the very nature of what you've discarded as being not so, use your mind today to do the job, the only job, <laughs> as it is, that it does well. So this ritual, this cultivation of activity, is making a hobby of creating habits, productive habits, and along with putting out the trash of yesterday, thoughts, activities, actions, interactions that don't hold up to the scrutiny of our mind as adding to, constructively adding to the basis of our ultimate understanding. <laughs> and believe me, if you can cultivate one thing from yesterday, that at least it survived the cursory examination of immediately dis dismissing it as not so. Those things that survive, those kernels that survive our examination, our reflection, our intuition as being possibly, maybe, so. That's like a golden nugget. And for me, the cursory process, the uh, first evaluation, of what needs to be deleted, what needs, needs to be unremembered, unduplicated, not repeated. And the golden nugget of what's left, the residual, what's left for further contemplation, evaluation. This process is ongoing until your mind exhausts the possibility of these nuggets of these kernels being not so <laughs> maybe not so or maybe so and much of my day on a, much of my meditation, contemplation is spent with that nugget. Is it fool's gold? Is it connected? Is it in a quartz matrix? Veins of quartz, quartz that at first blush seem keepers. But this process can't even begin to take place until you stop being a slave, a puppet. A puppet is a more apt analogy, perhaps, because a slave has consciousness. A slave can have, can maintain and grow a sliver of hope to throw off their chains, to become 
free to entertain their natural state of being. I've heard it said by our prison systems, we confine, confine people physically, even in the worst type of incarceration, which is slavery. We cannot capture, control their mind. Their mind is con closely connected to their free will. So back to my analogy of the gold nugget. Intertwined in this, and it's usually quite small. It might be something that most people missed. It might have occurred between a heartbeat or between a breath, between breathing in and out. So vigilance, do vigilance. Otherwise, the screen as you're sifting, since we're using this gold nugget, well, let's run with it. The screen that you're sifting with, it's a process of coarser to finer screens. So the activity my daily activity is cultivating, screening, sorting these nuggets. These nuggets that need to be manhandled through rigorous examination. When we refine it to a point where it's pure gold and it becomes part of the great unknowable, the intrinsically, at least again, less qualified, intrinsically unknowable from our current condition of being. So what's in our past that we can cultivate, refine, that we can safely store in the realms of the unknowable. Now for me, unknowable doesn't present any obstacles. I've always been willing to recognize what I don't know. And I look for that which I can know, try to incorporate it into my daily existence, and accumulate, add to my collection of unknowability. <laughs> the unknown, the great unknown. Knowing full well that as my journey continues to spiral to infinity, the time and place will come that 
what is unknown can enter the realms of the known. <laughs> and the nature of the universe is that as you add, as you harvest what you can from your current state of evolution, as you harvest, as you glean from the unknowable and add it to the precious seed of nobility, you have to be humbled and appreciate that just as you got this one little sliver The unknowable is also infinite. As I look at it, there's never reason for boredom. If the unknowable was finite, what fun would that be? What would be left? So my point is twofold today. Cultivating, searching, evaluating the occurrences of the days prior to this moment. Looking to see if you're silently, unknowingly being controlled by some puppeteer, if you're just responding to the past. So the value of experience, as I see it, the value of going through things is that you can learn. So this is the positive aspect of experiential journey is that you can learn, you can take away while surrendering up the strings, the quasi-invisible strings that the puppeteer so skillfully manipulates, forcing us to dance to its tune. So we talk about experiential and experimental. Every day is an exper <laughs> it's an experiment. Every day should be celebrated for the opportunity it truly is. See if you're looking forward by looking backwards, by letting the past pull your strings, by giving credence, by giving substance, substance to the past, making events from the past Surreal, more real than they ever warranted being. But I would say that most people I observe
seem to be puppets, puppets of the past. They accept their experiences as the nature of things. Well, I experienced this, so that's how things are. <laughs> Not at all. That was simply your experience. It, what comes to mind immediately is the blind mice and the elephants. And the elephant. And I'm never sure how many mice there were. And I kind of get my stories, my fables, mixed up, kind of jumbled up. That's a tendency of mine. But my point is that each blind mice, mouse was touching a different part of the elephant and, tell, and explaining to us what an elephant is by the part that they can discern through their other senses. Touch, smell, hearing, the noises that the animal makes. What part of the elephant are you holding on to? <laughs> and are you allowing this part that you're currently touching restrict and limit you into your perceptions of what life is. We know that we all experience the same experiences, our level of acceptance individuates. We make our experiences personal. And then we make the next, take the next step in the fallacy of thinking that our experiences somehow capture, encapsulate reality. And we continue on our merry way dancing, puppets dancing to the past without even a reflection, a consideration that it could be another way. We all are here to learn and the past is one way we go through life to learn, to advance, hopefully, at least not to go backwards. So that's why we experience similar or the same stimuli, we experience it different, leading us to interpret it different, differently. But if you make part of your practice, as I do, reflecting, contemplating, maybe even getting glimpse of, glimpses of inspiration, of not only what you discern to happen, but take it that next step and why? Why are these events in your life? That's where the opportunity comes not to be a slave 
of our perceptions, our perceptions based on the fallacy of our comprehension and our acceptance of them as reflections of reality. So, take a look at your process. Maybe you can be like Pinocchio, a wooden puppet whose wish was to become a real human boy. May we all wish that we could fully become the entities that we are meant to be. See each day as a possibility. Consider that it's in the realm of possibility that you don't have to be a puppet, that you can cut the strings. As Pinocchio, you can become a real little boy or a little girl. Is this Innocence. Innocence is a difficult state to maintain in the face of all that we face. The nicest compliment I ever received from my teacher was that I was so innocent. At that time, I was in my mid-60s, and he thought it was quite amazing that at that age, I was innocent. And with innocence comes purity. And purity is the closest that I've been able to get to clarity. And Roger said, I should end today with my hood in my best invitation, in my appreciation of all that he's done and will continue to be doing. He and his psychic, Milafo, will continue.